Letters, 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 letters. Rick G writes, Line Screw was back in Canada and uploaded a video, uploaded a video yesterday where he talked about the serious flooding. And this shows once again that Dave only talks about Line Screw's Carolyn videos but doesn't mention his uploads that discuss other subject matter. Then Dave complains that Line Screw only talks about Carolyn, which is just not factual. Okay, <clears throat> first off, I don't say that he only talks about Carolyn, but he does talk about Carolyn a lot, okay? And yes, he does other videos. Uh, he did a video where he was down and going down to Vegas and taking a plane down there. He did a video earlier last month or whatever where he flew across part of Canada and he does videos about camping things and stuff like that. And and yes, he did a video yesterday about the, the flooding that's going on in the Vancouver area and all that and how a, a dry lake bed actually now became an, old, an old, ancient old dry lake bed became a lake again. But we also had other people doing videos on that, so I just happened to report what they were doing and not what he was doing. I'm sorry if I gave the wrong impression, but he does talk about Carolyn. He did do another one about Carolyn, though, didn't he? For the record, okay, these are Line Screw's last 15 videos. So, Carolyn, 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 Carolyn. <laughs> you know, okay. He does mix some other stuff in there. But there's an awful lot of Carolyn, right? Uh, Lindy of the Liv Lindy and Lovey says I have a job at age 74, but living in my but I'm living in my van. Rents, you know, like apartments and stuff are too high. I have worked almost 60 years and I have paid my share of taxes. So I live on the streets. I helped paid for and I'm still paying for for the streets and what's so what's the problem that's true that's a very important point you know we were saying that i was saying that if you know are a nomad that's boondocking a lot and not paying you know just sleeping in other place in towns and you know not paying for your camping and using taxpayers supported facilities like parks and roads maybe you should help out and that doesn't mean you have to pay more taxes but just kind of you know pay it back a little bit but yeah you know if you're if you're older an older folk and you've spent a lot of time and effort paying your taxes uh, then you've earned you've earned the right to live on the street right <laughs> as a nomad you, i've earned that right i paid for it oh old fisherman says dave you arrived in arizona beautiful blue skies low humidity uh, just in time. Full moon tonight. I did see it was almost full last night. It came up here right over the beautiful back deck back there. We had a, uh, yeah. Anyway, lunar eclipse Friday morning. Tell all your haters you're going to black out the moon. We'll check that out. If I, you know, I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning because that's 7 a.m., you know, back in North Carolina. So if I, you know, I, I'll try to look for that tomorrow. That's a good idea. Autumn Sky says, most of the time when I hear a nomad talk about how they got into the nomadic lifestyle, it was because they couldn't pay for a place or afford necessities and obligations, let alone eat. Sure, there's an element of freedom, but I think it's more of the fact that one has the ability to live and work and have some money left. Uh, be able to afford their shelter and live on their own terms. You can have all the comforts of a home and have uh, very little freedom or you can have freedom and live in a very minimalistic lifestyle. That being a no, that being a nomad and can offer and that can offer, uh, the, yeah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. She goes on quite a ways there, autumn skies. But uh, very interesting point there. And again, there are many many reasons why nomads you know live on the road and all that. And it is true that it is getting more and more expensive, especially here in America, to live as an older folk, and to you know get along and all that. And if that if you know, cutting back your expenses by living in a vehicle can allow you to have a little more money left over to do some other stuff, then you have more freedom and that's and a minimalistic lifestyle. That is very true. So, you know, just, you know, we do see the nomads that collect Mickey dolls and motorcycles and smart cars and 70 inch UHD TVs and spend that, their money on stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, minimalistic lifestyle. I've always said that a minimalistic lifestyle, I think, is important. You know, what you, you, it's important to know what's important. There we go. Camo Dave said that. It's important 
to know what's important. And what's important is not, a, not, having, not carrying around a giant pile of junk everywhere you go, right? For the enemy says, uh, from the beach to the forest to the desert, always pack your trash. That's a good idea. Not up before the enemy also says, Dave, since you were the first profiled by the TSA at the airport, better change out your camo for khakis while in Arizona. Neighbors might think a militia member has moved in next door. Have a great time. You know, what's interesting is in North Carolina, uh, probably 30% of the guys are wearing camo pants, but not here in Arizona. No, it's leisure, it's leisure suits. I see all the... They're making a comeback now. It's golf shirts and khaki pants. It's, <laughs> my friend here is wearing his leisure suit. Blue. It's baby blue. Yeah, it's, I like that. Yeah. C80V says, banning RV street living is way overdue. Yeah. <laughs> what are they going to do? What do you, so you ban RV street living, living. Where are these poor people going to live? Are you going to build them houses? Are you going to build a community where they can live? Like, you know, you're just giving them one less option of where to live. You got to live somewhere, a tent, a shack. I don't know, you know, in a cardboard box out by the railroad tracks. I mean, at least you're living in an RV. If it's an old beat up RV, at least, you know, go find an industrial area where you can park it and not be in anybody's way and go live your life. It's certainly a better option than some of the other options out there, right? You just keep banning things. What are people supposed to do? Go on RV and says, Dave, the winters up here in Washington State and British Columbia have been getting worse each year. We recently had a quick temperature drop into the 20s that froze and shattered my RV's rear window. It's like crum it's crumbling like a dry cookie. Got to work fast and get it replaced in this crappy weather. I don't know. Yeah, the weather's get it's getting wilder everywhere, isn't it? Fear to Turk Ray just passed through Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Just say, <laughs> say hi to Sarah Cox. Uh, yeah, Sarah Cox lives in Albuquerque. It's just say, okay, he just passed Albuquerque heading west. Now, he was in West Texas on Wednesday. Not West Texas, excuse me. He was in Western Kentucky. He was in Western Kentucky on Wednesday. And now he's just passing through Albuquerque on Thursday. And he's going to be, he said, and then he stopped at Denny's French Toast Slam uh, halfway up the hill. Then he's going to have supper tonight in Quartzsite. So he's going all the way from Albuquerque to Quartzsite in one day, which is pretty good. A lot of driving there. You're really in a hurry there, Ray. The Nomad says, you're right, Dave. Uh, the people working hard every day just to pay their rent, to get, get, they get frustrated by going homeless. That, that yeah. The, oh, by the, okay. Let me start this over again. Sorry, I'll, I could just reshoot this, but I won't. Hi, not a nomad says you're right, Dave. The people working hard every day ju just to pay their rent get frustrated by the growing homeless that have all day to beg for money, but no time to pick up their own trash like needles, which endanger others. Okay. I believe in helping these people, but they have to take some personal responsibility to get a job and a place to live. It's called being an adult. Finally, Nomad Weather Girl says, it's a shame that, that homeless people can't get out of high cost states, high cost of living states. California, like, like California, and go to a low cost living state, they might have a chance to find work and a place to rent. My best friend was living in Colorado and left due to high costs, One now and, and now lives in Kentucky in a huge house. Wow. Um, you know, that's not a bad idea to have some sort of a national homeless group that relocates people. You know, you know, you know yeah, it's very true where the cost of living is lower and where there are more jobs. I, there, there should be some sort of way to do that, to take people from places like California where there aren't jobs and where there's a very high cost of living and like move them to Kentucky where there are jobs and it doesn't cost as much to get at least an apartment or some place to live. That's a good idea there, uh, Nomad Weather Girl, and uh, somebody ought to figure that one out. Hey, everybody, that's it for Letters, Letters, Letters for the 18th of uh, 2021. I was uh, doing some exploring all around this part of Arizona yeah, today up until about uh, 2 o'clock. I had a very interesting uh, lunch at Sumburro and, uh, and some very interesting uh, RV experiences around town here. So I am in... Uh, Beautiful Phoenix metropolitan area for the next few days. And then we're heading west to Quartzsite, Los Agadones, Yuma, 
uh, San Diego, etc., etc., etc. So that'll be coming up next week. Thanks for watching. Vlog under.